It is so hard to get my mind together just to tell this story and make it make sense because it's been 20 years of nonsense and then five years of intense craziness and survival. I think we'll just put it in stories maybe for now. Just sit on the couch and talk about it. I cried so much that night. I remember him chasing me <laughs> with the lighter fluid and then throwing this Zippo that he had just bought in Switzerland where we had renewed our vows 30 days before, almost exactly 30 days before. When I look back at my text, we had been arguing for weeks very intensely because he had acted a fool while we were in Switzerland, um, disappearing on the last night, which is something he always did for like 15 years before that. Just the most annoying, childish thing ever. But... I think it had come to a point where I was done with it. The kids had just moved out. And when you look at my text that were conveniently saved on the cloud, because I save all my text, um, I was pretty intense and pretty clear about how I was feeling about him. Two nights before I was burned, he did not come home and I didn't care looking at the text. And the night that I was burned at 5.43 p.m. was the last text because he got home. And at 8.09 p.m. was the 911 call. When the police got there, we'd been drinking. They asked him what happened. <laughs> I was being tended to. They looked around pretty much thought everything was looking on the up and up, left, and looking at the police report, they just said that he said it was an accident, they smelled alcohol, I didn't make any assertions of wrongdoing or something, and um, case closed. I'm brown, he's not. We lived in Georgia. I'm going to continue speaking out until I am heard because I'm not going to live the rest of my life trying to get away from this person. And I'm telling you now, if something is not done, somebody else will perish or myself. No question, because he already has a conviction for an essay from 30 years ago. Actually, not a conviction. He pled no contest. You might think that someone loves you and it's, wouldn't harm you, but don't. Because when you get into the realm of narcissistic abuse and emotional abuse and someone has you kind of conditioned to be very reactive and always make excuses for them and just trying to keep them from making mistakes. And it's just ridiculous. I don't know how to articulate that part of it yet. He's a grown man. If he's making a mistake, it's his problem. She's a grown woman. If she's making a mistake, it's her problem. I think that's it for today. Y'all keep up. This is a lot easier for me to record because I get overwhelmed and I want to tell my story and I want to find justice um, because this isn't a person who has just made a mistake. This is a person who continues to hurt people. Y'all be safe. Love you.